Welcome back. So we're going to continue our discussion of corporate entrepreneurship by looking at another failure of corporate entrepreneurship, once again in the French context. And here is the article we're going to look at. Yeah, and this is another one of my favorites. I like the historical context. Before we get too far into the article, I want to just give you some background on Taylorism. Now, you may have already watched the, the, back, uh, the video that I've got on Principles of Scientific Management on my channel. Um, so you may, so if you've already seen that video, I apologize. You don't, um, you know, you can fast fast forward through parts of this. Um, but let's talk about what scientific management is at all. So Frederick Taylor, Frederick Winslow Taylor, wrote a couple of books. Um, let's see, Principles of Scientific Management, Principles of Shop Management. They were each published in, I want to say it was 1911 and 1913. And what Frederick Taylor is trying to do, and by the way, here's a picture of him. Frederick Taylor was an engineer, and a mechanical engineer specifically, and he said, you know what? You can optimize machines to operate better. What if you could optimize a man to operate better? What if you could redesign processes in such a way that workers could be more efficient? And if workers are more efficient, they're producing more, and we could even pay the workers a little bit more too, right? In some of the experiments that he gives in Principles of Scientific Management, he winds up paying the workers. Yeah, you know, the workers wind up doing sometimes two and a half, uh, three times the workload just through better use of tools, better techniques, managing their rest time appropriately, et cetera, et cetera. So sometimes two and a half, three times the workload, and they wind up giving the workers like a 30% premium if they meet their quotas for the day, right? Um, and again, this is a huge deal because it's making money for the corporations and it's making more money for the workers. And a lot of Frederick Taylor's kind of standardization of work is attributed, is, is credited to kind of helping to further advance America's Industrial Revolution. And his most famous experiment are what they call the pig iron exper um, experiments. And if you're not sure what pig iron is, I've got a picture of it here. It's just these heaps of iron. And they would move iron from a pile onto rail cars. So they're just picking up iron and then dumping it in rail cars. And he found that, you know, if they only, if the workers carry only a certain, a certain amount of pig iron um, each load and if they rest at certain times and all this other stuff, it could really enhance their productivity. So these were process engineers that observed workers and found better ways for them to do their tasks. Um, you know, it, I highly recommend that you read um, some of Taylor's works. Um, you know, he's an engineer, so these aren't really all that academic, and I think they're very interesting. Um, it's, not a, it's not particularly highbrow stuff, but I think for historical purposes, um, I think you should check it out. So, this is looking at Michelin, and some of you probably know Michelin. There's the Michelin Guide, and the uh, Food Guide, and the Michelin Tire Company. It's the same company, actually. They made the Michelin Guides, the restaurant guides, because the idea was back in the day, you were on the road, you were using Michelin tires on your cars while you were on the road, and you'd need to stop somewhere to eat along the way, and you could check your Michelin guide. They thought that, I guess, that it would encourage people to drive on the road more, wear the tires out, and get more business. I don't know if it actually worked or not, but that's the idea. And this is the Michelin plant at Clement Ferrand, France, and here's actually a picture of it. So that's kind of the context of the article. And so, this takes place, this article takes place in a context where the French are really trying to undergo rationalization of work. They are trying to standardize processes, they're trying to be more efficient, they're trying to rapidly increase their economic power at this time, right? And every company wants to do this. And so that's what they mean by rationalization of work, using the principles of scientific management to do things the same way every time to increase output. That's the impetus behind it. Now, what they wind up doing is they develop like a Frederick Taylor, principles of scientific management library in Paris, and they wind up having these meetings where, you know, people kind of discuss general principles. This is the Comité Michelin in particular. They have something called Société d'encouragement, pour l'industrie nationale, you know, this is um, Society for Engagement of National Industry. 
you know, the idea is you could, you could go and you can have these meetings, you can discuss scientific management, you can get interested in it, you could ask questions, um, you could check out books. Um, I did read somewhere, though, that that library wound up getting burned down by a labor union later because a lot of the French workers really resented the fact that they were being told to standardize things. And, you know, and on, a, on an interesting related note, even today, when I, like when I was in France you know, doing my graduate work, I read Shop Management and Principles of Scientific Management. I thought they were good books. And I would tie it into some of my presentations. Don't ever, ever say you like Taylor to a French person. I mean, you might as well be saying you worship the devil. I wound up offending so many people. Um, I got thrown out of a research group one time because I, I mentioned that I like Taylor. It, 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 it's extremely offensive to them, um, which is ironic because a lot of Taylorism is about being neutral and scientific in your approach, but it just doesn't work in a French context. It, it, um, these principles have worked very well in Germany, they've worked well in Japan, they work to an extent in the US. Not going to happen in France, and that's kind of the point of this article. So anyhow, they have these kind of discussion groups of Taylorism, and it gets interesting um, because what the French took away from it was a bunch of tools. They understood that you could use a stopwatch to follow people around and measure their work, but they never exactly understood the essence of scientific management. They never understood that it was about enhancing efficiency and productivity. They never thought about it in the big picture terms. They just focused on the small things. And I shouldn't pick on the French either, right? Um, you know, I've done Lean Six Sigma consulting, and Lean Six Sigma is a periphery doctrine of scientific management. It's kind of the modern day version of it. And I remember going, uh, doing a consulting project, and, you know, these people were doing Lean Six Sigma training, and they spent months trying to figure out where to put the copy machine in a building to minimize the number of steps back and forth for the copy machine. You know, that over-analysis gets to the point where it's no longer efficiency promoting and therefore it's not really promoting Taylorism, right? They had another thing where they optimized the share drive, like fewer folders on their share drive or something. And I even point out like, what is the matter with you people? You just use a search function if you can't find something. Why did you spend months on this? Right? So they weren't promoting efficiency, they just got in the little weeds. And that's really not what Taylor wanted. The weeds were designed to promote the big picture. Okay? Uh, not, you know, the big picture was designed to promote the little things in the weeds. So they, people got so tied up on the details they didn't understand why they were doing these things. Um, so this became quite problematic. So what Michelin winds up doing is they start an internship program. And they give the students grades, mediocre, poor, passable, quite good, and good. Now, of course, there were some very basic problems that went along with the internships. Because uh, Michelin wanted to see if students could learn the principles of scientific management. Well, first of all, it's like any other internship. Sometimes you want to do an internship and they wind up having to make coffee instead of actually doing internship kinds of things. So that was bad. The second thing that was bad was the fact that, once again, they focused on the tools, not the essence. They could harass workers with a stopwatch and bother them, but they didn't understand that they were there to promote efficiency. They just thought it was kind of a control thing. So this is what they wind up talking about, a superficial revision of the facts. Yeah, they did some Taylorism, but did they really promote efficiency? No. So. Michelin had another product, a project in addition to the internships. And kind of the, the source of it is Andre Michelin sent his nephew Marcel to Milltown, New Jersey, where uh, Taylor was operating at that time. And you know, Taylor says, well, I'll tell you what, you know, you need a few months to actually learn scientific management. And Marcel says, well, I don't have that much time. Can I just send him for a few weeks? So he winds up sending him for a few weeks. Again, I'm not sure the guy really understood scientific management, but he did it anyway. Yeah, uh, it was estimated that Michelin would need a full three years to implement scientific management. So what do they wind up doing? They kind of sort of get it. So they, first of all, they're able to at least start um, 
and they, and they say this on page 14 if you're following along in the article. They talk about production, social affairs, and pedagogical functions. Okay. So, first of all, they actually do some classic scientific management. They use stopwatches, and they're trying to reduce uh, production costs. They do observe workers' movements. They get rid of the useless uh, movements. You know, they try to figure out the most efficient method. So, they kind of, sort of, start to get it, right? When we talk about social affairs, they did something that Taylor didn't do much of, but they wound up doing something that Henry Ford did a lot of. And they created workers' cities. So they built housing for the workers that was near the Michelin facility so they could walk back and forth, you know, the school, the library, all that kind of stuff. Henry Ford was notorious for this at the early Ford plants. He called it the $5 a day man uh, project. So the $5 a day man, you got to remember in Henry Ford's time, $5 a day was a, a lot of money. Um, you know, an agricultural labor in those days maybe made a quarter a day, right? So it's a lot of money. But the $5 a day man lived in company housing. The $5 a day man sent his kids to school. The $5 a day man didn't drink. Uh, $5 a day man said so he went to church. He didn't hit his wife. You know, there's all these things that the $5 a day man did. So Henry Ford's people kind of observed your personal life as a technique to basically make sure you were behaving. And the idea was if workers weren't drunk or having troubles in their personal lives, they'd be more efficient in the workplace. It didn't work exactly the best. $5 a day man, it became unsustainable. Um, they wound up having foremen and journeymen and apprentices and all this other stuff that weren't five dollar a day men they were 25 cents a day man it caused labor disputes fights riots the whole thing and on top of that when people left the ford facilities everybody in the communities knew these were five dollar a day men so it wound up being a five dollar steak a five dollar haircut you know, it, it, things it, it really didn't work the way henry ford um, had in mind now my favorite is they have this pedagogical function, and this is a lot like Kaizen, where anybody could make a suggestion for improvement because the idea was that the workers knew the process is the best. And if you made a suggestion, of course, you could get a bonus. Now, the problem was they wound up mandating that workers make a certain number of suggestions. So there's a pressure to make suggestions and observe things. Well, not everybody has a technical capability to improve processes. Some people, their best use of their time is just actually doing the work, not thinking about how to do it better. So people want to be coming pressured to come up with you know, suggestions and things like that. That really um, didn't work out too well for Michelin. And by the way, you think, oh, well, that was just France and back in the day. No, I read an interesting case a few years ago. A major technology company had a similar program where if you came up with an idea and you found one person in the company who thought it was a good idea, they signed a form and you got a $500 bonus. And they were talking about this technology company, these two QB mates, that just came up with dumb ideas all day, you know, just to get the $500 bonus. One guy said he bought a brand new Jeep Cherokee off, uh, off the bad ideas. And he was talking about, like, even one of their ideas, which, again, I can't say it's a bad idea, but it has nothing to do with technology, right? This was a company that made printers, calculators, things like that. It was for chopsticks that had a special plunger sucker apparatus on the end, and you'd suck up the soy sauce at a Japanese restaurant and squirt it all over your sushi while you're eating it. Again, might be a cool thing, but it has nothing to do with printers, calculators, etc. So they were really taking advantage of the situation. One thing they did do very well, though, is they looked at engineers as mentors and teachers of the workers, and that really does embody Frederick Taylor's principles of scientific management. So that part they did um, a really good job. Engineers, not so much just as supervisors, but also coaches and mentors. Um, so again, it wasn't a perfect system. There were some failures along the way. They didn't fully understand what scientific management was or how to implement. But you know, sometimes a bad system, even if you don't get all the parts, but if you can kind of implement parts of it, sometimes there's good results. And I think this is what we see in Michelin, right? They didn't exactly understand the total essence of scientific management, but they're able to understand bits and pieces of it, and it wound up increasing Michelin's productivity. Um, if you've enjoyed this discussion, yeah, definitely read the article. It's one of my favorites. Make sure you give me a thumbs up. That's a like. Comment down below and make sure you subscribe. I'll see you uh, on the next playlist.